Next up is Natalie Ellis from Essex, who came up with her invention while driving around with her dog in the back of the car on a hot day. She's entering the den looking for £120,000 to unleash her product all around the world. Hello, my name's Natalie, Managing Director of Prestige Pet Products UK and I'm here today to ask you for £120,000 in exchange for 15% of my road refresher non-spill water bowl. This may look like any other water bowl but right now it's full of water, you could put it in your car, caravan boat, you could go over speed bumps, you could slam the brakes on, you could kick it across the floor and you wouldn't spill a drop. This is because of the inner section, this floating floor. This sits on the surface of the water and the feed holes allow one mouthful of water through at any one time. So there's always enough for the dog to drink, but never enough to spill. If you were to slam the brakes on or kick it across the floor, the force of the water would push the plate up to trap all the water underneath, so it's impossible to spill. Not only does this stop spills from in the home and on the move. It also means that because your dog can only pick up one mouthful at a time, he can't suck a load up and then turn around and spit it all over the kitchen floor. So it encourages tidy drinking as well. Over the past five months, I've sold 22,000 road refresher bowls and turned over 70,500 pounds, 42,000 gross profit and 13,000 net profit. My aim is to now take the road refresher to America. This is because this year alone, the Americans are expected to spend $10.5 billion on dog accessories alone. Thank you. Can I have a look at the product? Yeah, sure. Uh, one with please. water or one without? I'm not thirsty. There are several keen dog lovers among the dragons, and they've been listening intently to Natalie Ellis's assured pitch for her innovative dog bowl business. But will that convince them to invest £120,000 to help her expand into the massive US market? Uh, thank you, Natalie. You're welcome. Now, this, this sounds in the face of it like a very good business idea. Thank you. You've sold 22,000 of those? I've sold 22,000 in the past five months and 60 over the past two and a half, three years. Excuse me if I'm being a bit thick. Why would you want to sell some equity? Because I have the one bowl at the moment and each production press only produces one bowl. But this is why I them. needed the money because 40,000 of it was to go into making new moulds. Plus I want a smaller bowl for small dogs and one for cats and a larger bowl for multiple dog owners. You're selling the product as fast as you can make them? No, I'm not selling them as fast as I can make them because I can make 8,500 per month. But if I want to go to America, that's not good enough. Natalie's holding her own. Now, animal lover Deborah Meaden has some questions for the entrepreneur. I think you've done really well. You sold 22,000 of these in the last five months. Yeah. I think you've done Thank really, you. you've got a product, you've got it produced. So, first of all, can you tell me what, exactly what the patent is for? It's for the inner floating plate, which is the whole thing that makes the product work. So that could be used for any animal, any device, so it could be used for yeah. any livestock, it actually? Can, yeah. Any and size? I, yep. Yeah, and I intend to roll it out through more than pet bowls. I mean, you know, the working technology of it, there's several areas that I want to use the same technology for. It's a young company, but the dragons seem impressed by its early successes. Now, Theo Pafitis wants to know more about the entrepreneur herself. Tell me about Natalie. Um, my past. I was in outdoors advertising sales. I left that eight years ago to go into the pet market because I knew there was good money in it. I designed ranges which I then sold directly to Sainsbury's on a national basis but it was just for seasonal and Christmas. What, in your own company? Yes. So the last eight years? In my you... other company. What was that called? Prestige Pet Products. And what happened to Prestige I Pet Products? I liquidated it. My first accountant I had... So it went bust? Well, yeah, yeah, I suppose it did. It went bust. When did it go bust, Natalie? Um, I, I froze the bank accounts in September 05, right. which is when I opened this 
this company. Yeah. It had no debts. There was a discrepancy over a VAT. So you owed the VAT money? We had put through a VAT invoice twice for £17,000. I had a VAT inspection. I'm not good at keeping paperwork. The VAT told me there was a £17,000 shortage, which I couldn't account for. And it wasn't until it was with the liquidator that we went through all the figure work and went through everything that that was where the problem had originally sprung so from. So you didn't owe the VAT money? Um, well, the, I don't think so, no. In the end, it was closed down. Um, the liquidator closed it down. She said there's been absolutely no foul play and it wasn't an issue and they weren't looking into it. Natalie is being very honest with the Dragons, but her candour seems to be raising concerns about her attention to business detail. And that against a backdrop of her very ambitious expansion plans. Can I ask you, what's your fascination with the States? The market there is so much bigger than it is here. But also, I've got a patent pend in there and I wouldn't want to just kind of close the door on America because they love their animals. To me, a much more obvious path would have been to actually penetrate the market within the UK. Yeah. Not have to ask, sell any of your equity, just roll it out through Europe and roll it out through the States because you're doing so well. The trouble is that the path you've chosen has led you to ask for £120,000. If you come in here with a different future ahead of you and therefore ask for less money, I would have been interested. But I'm afraid at this level and with that future, I'm out. A fundamental disagreement with Natalie's business plan has pushed Deborah Meaden away from any further negotiations. And Peter Jones is looking riled. Natalie? Yes. Hello, I'm Peter. Hello. Hi, nice to Well, the thing is, you, the, the moment you're asking for £120,000 for 15% of the company, you're valuing it at nearly 50 times your profits. I'd argue that actually you're, what's sitting in front of me now, which is probably innovative, a bowl, the whole business, I'd struggle to try and value it at £100,000, let alone £120,000 for 15%. What's your justification for the value? Um, it's patent, it's patented product, the patent is worth it. If you had a dog, when if you were in the market... Granted? Sorry? When did you get the patent granted? It isn't granted, it's pending. So he doesn't have a patent then? No, it's patent pending. So he doesn't have a patent? Not at the moment, no. So but if you, I mean, you're obviously not my target market, because I've, the amount of bowls I've sold, everybody loves it, I've had not one Can single Can I say that's, that, that's, that's a really poor comment? I'm obviously not your target market. No, is but it, if you had a dog... That it's you irrelevant whether I've got a dog or not. I'm an investor in businesses. OK. I don't have to actually be and buy everything I invest in and want to buy. I look at it as a business opportunity that's presented in front of me. It's a brave entrepreneur who locks horns with Peter Jones. Theo Pafitis is ready to show his hand. Natalie, let yes. me tell you where I am. I think it's a great product. So whilst I like the product... Why am I so against investing in you? You'll tell me. I am going to tell you. You've sat here trying to explain to us what went wrong with your previous business and you couldn't tell us. If you must know, I had a TIA, which is a mini-stroke. You had a TIA? OK, talk to me. Yeah, a mini-stroke in Germany. Right. I ended up in hospital, come back a bit like a vegetable. I couldn't remember anything. Take some time. Take some time. It's a personal revelation from the entrepreneur and discussions pause while everyone composes themselves. Shall I explain? I don't think you need to explain. Um, I think it's incredible, because you show absolutely no sign of it. And you've obviously been incredibly brave, and you've done... Now telling us what you've told us, it just seems that you've <sighs> climbed Everest to recover from that to do what you've done and get the cells that you've got. Yeah. Um, and you should be very mm. proud of yourself. Thank you. I think the product's great. 
But I do believe there's a one-man band, a one-girl band, trying to conquer America just one step too much. If you even try to go to America on your own, they will eat you alive. I would look for a licensing deal. I'd give it to a specialist company. I actually then believe you don't need the money. So I'm out, and I'm going to wish you the very best of luck and Excellent. well done. Lovely, thank you. Okay. There's plenty of compassion and sound advice from Theo Pafitis, but no cash injection. Will the other dragons agree with his assessment of her American expansion plans? Natalie, should I tell you where I am? Um, have you heard that expression, you know, America is the graveyard of UK businesses? No. Remember the phrase. Um, I definitely get the product, I understand the product, but to me, it's, it seems like a lifestyle business rather than an investable business. And for that reason, I'm out. But okay. good luck. Thank you. Natalie. Yes. I think it's a great product. I think you've done terrific to get where you are with it. But I just don't see a big market for it. And I agree with James, it's a lifestyle business. You know, um, and there's no huge profit in this. So for that reason, I'm out. OK. It's all but over for Natalie's pitch. Peter Jones has the final say. Natalie. Hi. If it's not investment you want, I think it's help, infrastructure and support. Yeah. And I think you should join a large organisation, learn from it, enjoy it, have your dream come true. And for that reason, the only reason you make that uninvestable, then I can't invest in you because it's just you I'm investing in. Yeah. And that's the reason why I'm out. OK, lovely. Thank you. Natalie, good Thanks, luck. Thanks, Natalie. Thank you. Good luck, Natalie. Thank you. Bye. It's been an emotional session in the den. But this is business, and Natalie just couldn't persuade the dragons to share in her ambition. So you're trying to capture America with a lack yeah. of knowledge. Mm -hmm. It would be like just walking into the lion's den. <laughs>